you are so serious about making money, this is the channel for you. Hello there and welcome in this lecture in which we're going to proceed by basically uh, general or creating an SEO uh, or custom GPT SEO blog post and article writer expert. And so uh, let's go ahead and accomplish just this, shall we? Now, of course, make sure that you're here. Click on Explore. And uh, now right here, I would like to go to the Create My GPT and it will take us to the GPT Builder. In the meantime, I'd like to go to Chat GPT itself. And I'm not going to use, uh, I'm not going to use, I think, I, okay, so let's just use the GPT-4 because I'm trying to go easy on the the the, uh, the credits that we have, which is 40 messages every 30 hours. But let's just go ahead and just uh, risk a little bit. Okay, so what do we have to lose? So let's say I am building a custom GPT that helps businesses online to write SEO optimized blog posts and articles about any any topic including a conclusion and an FAQ can you please write three prompts that I can use to program my custom GPT to accomplish this make sure the prompts take into consideration the ethical aspect since uh, we don't want the content to have high plagiarism and uh, and it should comply with Google's guidelines because mostly Google because uh, now, of course, if people search on Bing, they will find. But Google, what they hate the most is plagiarism. If they find you have a high percentage of plagiarism, I had one website actually just recently was a fitness blog, and they they actually gave, uh, took it down. They gave me a strike uh, because they found some content that was highly plagiarized. And so I'm talking from experience. Now it was the first time that ever happened to me with Google, but. I'm, what I'm just trying to tell you here is don't test it. And also, don't test Google because if you make a mistake, they will they will punish you. So make sure that the content that you write has very low plagiarism. And also, this GPT, people are going to probably be using it to generate content for their website. So we don't want them to have content full of plagiarism that will cause them problems. That's the last thing we want because we want to create a product that is basically preserves them, doesn't uh, doesn't impact them or m contribute to their demise. So here, I'm going to hit enter, okay? And basically, it's going to proceed on by generating the prompt. In the meantime, I'll go to ch the chat GPT chatbot or the builder. I'm going to say, I am building a custom GPT that writes highly optimized SEO blog posts and articles come up with a brand name make it super uh, super catchy and use the keyword SEO writer now I want it to integrate SEO writer <clears throat> now probably it could say I could I could name it myself I could say Einstein uh, SEO writer but uh, mostly, uh, the Einstein will be copyrighted, so they will not allow me to publish uh, that GPT. Even though if you try and and, ha and do it, uh, I would be interested to see your results. But here, uh, a prompt for generating a blog post given a topic. Okay. Uh, okay. Certainly, cer uh, prompts for a custom GPT model tailored. All right. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this prompt into a text notepad. Let me see what this prompt is all about. Uh, it's a long prompt. Complete or this post should be engaging, informative. Uh, okay. All right. Don't save. So I think it didn't quite understand what I'm talking about. So what I want it to do is I'm going to say I want those prompts to program the custom GPT. So please write prompts directed at the GPT. So it's thought that I'm trying to get it to write a prompt that I can use to generate an article, which is a placeholder. Uh, but here, okay, of course, here's three prompts designed to instruct your custom GPT model. Okay, 
Well, I guess I just have to copy them. But let's go back here. All right. How about the name GPT uh, SEO Scribe? Okay. Now, now um, generate a logo. And it will proceed by generating a logo. In the meantime, as you can see, these are the other prompts. I guess I'm just I'm just going to have to go and copy and paste them. Okay. Uh, so uh, let's see what the GPT is going to say to that. It looks like there was an issue with the profile picture. Let's try again. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to answer yes because the, the the GPT builder was confused about what to what to what to put in the logo. So here, great. Could you provide some examples of topics, industries? So I'm just going to say, look, I just need a logo. Just design one. Now it's uh, sometimes it can be quite frustrating. Uh, it will just uh, not obey uh, for some reason. So I just have to force it to do it. Uh, because it just uh, you don't you, you shouldn't you mustn't leave it to go in a loop because if it goes in a loop we all know that a loop is infinite so it can ask you infinite questions of what do you think about this and what do you think about it? so still still it's asking me I apologize for anything it seems we're currently unable to generate logo due to technical issues while we resolve this is there anything else uh, okay so maybe there is some technical issues so here's uh, we're gonna go on I'm gonna copy the first prompt. And then copy the second prompt. All right, updating the GPT. All right, so it seems that it basically digested the prompt. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead. Before testing it, I'm going to give it the second prompt. And then I'm going to give it the third prompt, right? So the good thing is that when you do this my way, this way, when you ask ChatGPT itself to provide you with the prompts that you then will use to program your GPT, uh, ChatGPT gives you syntax compliant prompts, which means these prompts are directly understood by the GPT. And that's why we get these responses that say your GPT scribby is now fine tuned to specialize. So it's almost like there's a secret syntax language that we don't understand, maybe a machine language. Uh, but I don't care since uh, it, it works. I'm just going to continue using it. It's better than uh, than using uh, 50 prompts to get a GPT done because, as you know, we only have a limit of 40 uh, messages every three hours. And so this way we can optimize how many GPTs we can create per hour. This way, now we've used, I think, six prompts. Yes, uh, five. Uh, three plus the two first messages or, or three, or perhaps so six, let's say six. And so with six in three hours, 40, uh, so six 40 messages so that's pretty good we can generate as much as six gpts and uh so that's pretty interesting so here uh you can see seo script is now equipped okay so now we can test our gpt on the playground so let's go ahead and say write an seo optimized blog post about uh let's say the rise of chat gpt in 2023, 20, perhaps, let's say. All right, so here, let's see. It's going to start writing. Oh, perfect. The Rise of ChatGPT in 2023. The title is already formatted as a H1 because H1 is the title, heading number one, or header number one, uh, heading more precisely. And this is heading number two, uh, heading number two. Heading number three, these, these are not headings. These are just uh, uh, bullets. Heading number two, heading number three, heading number three, heading number three, heading number two. Now, how do I know heading number two from three? It's just a simple, uh, you just look at it. And when you see, for instance, you see the, the size and the size tells you this one is bolder. These ones are less in size. The key features are less in size than this and less bolder. So they are heading number threes. And basically, this is just a hierarchy of how a blog post or an article is basically created. As an SEO expert myself and practitioner, I know these things, and so should you. And if you don't, you can just take uh, maybe a couple of videos. You can find them for free on YouTube and learn for yourself about these things because these are a very important terminology SEO-wise. You have to know them. So here is our article. Now, I'm just going to go and do a quick test of plagiarism uh, because I have the Grammarly app. Oh, not the real world Grammarly app. Um, the Grammarly app will tell me how much is the percentage of plagiarism, plus I pay a big deal of money. $150 a year to Grammarly just so I can use their plagiarism checker. They have a plagiarism checker 
which checks for plagiarism, and you can use it only if you have access to Grammarly Pro. Now, I'm just going to paste this right here. They're going to ask me for my intent and so on and so forth. I'm just going to say done. I don't want to set any goals. I just want to test for plagiarism right away. So here at the, right, at the bottom right-hand side, I can click plagiarism. It will start checking for plagiarism. And hopefully it gives us maybe just a 10% or 6% or even lower. All right, 7%. Very good. Now, I'll just leave it at that. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to basically uh, uh, take this and try to... I can make it 0% plagiarism, but it's okay if you have 7%. Now, how do I make it 0%? You just take these in green, these uh, these sentences in outline in green, and you just change a couple of words. So, for example, here, uh, with its maybe capacity instead of ability, and next thing you know, you see now we're 5%. So, we jump for, we from 7% went down to 5%, and you can just scroll down and see other sentences, for example, ethical considerations, uh, such as privacy, data security. And so you can take this and maybe just change a couple of sentences. Now, at the same time, I'd like to go to Google, do one more test. Now, by the way, if you'd like to use any other plagiarism checkers than Grammarly, you have Quillbot, which is also, uh, if you want to check for plagiarism using Quillbot, it's pro. But you have to pay. You pay less than Grammarly, so I think it's a $49 per year. So it's three times less. But they have here, if you just do a couple of, uh, some search here, uh, you can find their plagiarism checker. There it is. But you have to have the pro version, and they will tell you that you need to upgrade to premium for you to be able to use it, okay? Or you can use another website, which is called Copyscape, also premium. But basically, the bottom line is to check for plagiarism, you always have to pay a specific tool. It's not for free, okay? It's a paid service. Copyscape, also, you can pay for it. Uh, it's based on credits, so I think 100 credits are worth $10. So you can test 100 articles, with $10, but that's very expensive uh, because if you have more, you'll pay more. And plus Grammarly, you pay for $150. It gives you access to the plagiarism checker. It gives you access to the score performance. Here you see the score. Uh, you can you can improve your text. If I, if I unclick on plagiarism, notice here they're giving me suggestions to improve my text, which I can click on. I can rephrase these sentences and that increases the score. And basically you're aiming for a score of 100. Uh, and it's e so easily attainable using Grammarly. And plus, you can download a PDF report that you can provide your clients if, for example, you're writing these articles or blog posts for your clients. Maybe they could be interested to read such a report right here, which tells them the number of characters, number of words, number of sentences, how much time it would take for people to read the article, how much time it would take for someone to speak the article, for them to hear it, and uh, the word length and the sentences, and also the readability score, which is very interesting and very important. And... Uh, uh, here, it should be it should be uh, so easily readable by people and also some other metrics. But now let's go and do one final thing, which is none other than the AI content detectors. Now I'm positive it's going to have some high percentage of AI content since this content was generated using ChatGPT. But let me go ahead and try this tool, writer.com, which I try most of the time, writer.com slash AI hyphen content detector, which I will leave the link to in the resources of this lecture. And there you can copy parts of your article. Don't copy the entirety because that tool can only process 1,500 words at a time. And there basically they have it here, 1,500 characters at a time. That's the only thing it can process. And so if you paste this here, uh, let's see, this is 1,245. So let's just test this and see. So here, according to this tool, it's 100% human generated. So there is no problem there. Uh, but if you try it on other tools as well, for instance, like uh, maybe... Uh, this particular tool right here, Copy Leaks, uh, which is not ranked number one. So according to Google, this is a trustworthy website, which uh, which requires you to log in. I've used this website many times. So go ahead and just log into your account, create a free account, and then you can test uh, the content there. Now, the good thing about Copy Leaks is that it tells you which parts of your content are uh, AI content, the AI content uh, according to the tool. And you can maybe go and maybe change them and maybe tweak them or, or something like that. All right, so it seems that the last time I used this tool, uh, it was for free. I think this time around, we have to pay. So I'm just going to go back into Google. I'm just going to try one more, and then we have to sum up with the lecture because we don't want to make it a 200-minute uh, lecture. Uh, so here, AI content detectors, AI content detectors. Uh, let's just search for this. Now, let me, for instance, probably try content at scale. This one also, according to my experience with it, also tells you uh, which parts of your content are plagiarized. 
and okay. I don't need to log in to use it. And plus, this is good. Uh, it, it copies the content with the headlines and so on and so forth. So if I check the AI content, let's see right now. It has a limit of 2,500 characters. Now here it says reads like AI. So the probability of this content is AI is, uh, is big. Uh, predicted based upon uh, 161 words. So it's uh, just 161 words. Now the ones in green are okay. The ones in, I think, in red are the ones that uh, need to be less robotic. And these ones, uh, the ones in orange, I believe, they are, they could pass for robotic, but they could also pass for human. So basically, uh, I think this is it. We have tested our DPT. It builds, it writes blog posts. Now let's go ahead and just go ahead and click right here to publish our GPT to everyone. All right, click everyone. But first, let's name our GPT. So I'm going to say, give it a name of SEO Scribby, SEO Scribe. Uh, so that's why it didn't allow us to publish. All right, so it was it is now named. Now let's say design a logo. Now you don't need to be uh, very specific with the prompts. Now, uh, the other time it didn't generate the logo because of a technical issue. We hope that the technical issue is resolved right now. By the way, OpenAI and technical issues go hand in hand. So uh, just so if you've not been using it for a long time. So here it's still the technical issues there. Let's see if we can publish this just with the, without the logo. Yeah, so we can. It seems we can. So without the logo, you can publish a GPT. SEO script, scribe. Now maybe, maybe after the problem is resolved, we can proceed by uh, basically generating the logos but as of now we'll just have to move on 